When I was a little boy, I remember saying to my parents around December, why can't we have a Christmas tree? And my dad put his hand under my chin and said, Jonathan, we have Shabbos. We're so lucky. It's so beautiful. We sit around the table with your family. We uh, have a great dinner. We sing songs. We talk about the Torah portion. We have guests. We do that every week. And then we have Rosh Hashanah, the new year, with all its pomp and circumstance and the getting dressed up and going to shul and hearing the shofar and all the beautiful prayers. And then the holy day of Yom Kippur we have. And then Sukkot with the lulav and etrog and how you love building that sukkah and all your friends come and we decorate it and we eat our meals in there. And Simchas Torah at the end where we dance with the Torahs. Then we have Hanukkah, eight days of glory and thinking about the Maccabees and playing dreidel and eating potato pancakes and latkes and getting presents. And then Tu Bishvat, and then we have Purim where we dress up and we hear the Megillah read, and we have Gragers and Hamantashen. Then Pesach, you get to sit with your Zaydi, and, and we tell the story of the Haggadah and uh, the special foods for eight days. And then Shavuos, when we think about the giving of the Torah. And then all the Yom Yerushalayim, the Jerusalem Day, and Yom Atzmud, the Israel Independence Day. We have so many wonderful holidays. Let them have their Christmas. We'll go to our neighbors, we'll decorate the tree. That's for them, and this is for us. We're so lucky. I thought that was such a great answer. Now, I'll put it in the context of two new books that are out that I think are very important in their discussions about American Judaism and American religion. One is by a professor at Harvard of religion named Putnam, who crunched numbers for decades about religion in America. He's actually interesting, a convert to Judaism uh, from Christianity. But he talks about in this book called American Grace how things are changing radically in America and that uh, the one-third of all Americans changed their religions during the course of their lifetime. He also talked about the increased tolerance among Americans for other religions. He called it the Aunt Susan Principle, where now there's so much intermarriage in the, the Jew in the world and in America that people have a lot of people in their families offered from other religions, and they like them, and they think that their religion then is not so bad. I just read about Ralph Lorenz's uh, grandson marrying a, a, a Bush granddaughter, uh, this is after the Clinton daughter married a Jewish boy. There's so much intermarriage these days. and So it kind of explains why there's a lot of mix-up. A lot of people think all religions are the same. So why, why can't a Jewish family have a Christmas tree? Part of this, too, is inspired by the fact that Stalin tried to crush all religion, and he didn't want to take people, the, the people's symbols away, so he let them have their Christmas trees. He called it a national tree. So a lot of Jews grew up with a secular tree, not understanding that in America represents a Christmas tree. It is called a Christmas tree. So this relates to the second book that I wanted to mention by a Boston University scholar of religion named Prothero. The book is called The Eight Major Religions That Rule the World, and basically his thesis is they're not all the same. There are huge differences in orientation between religions. Judaism is not the same as Christianity, and Hanukkah is not the same as Christmas. It's a very different holiday. In fact, uh, the, the book of John in the New Testament says that Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. It doesn't say Hanukkah there, but it talks about the winter feast. It was a very important holiday, and it speaks to the heart of America. It speaks to religious freedom and political freedom. It's the first time in history that a people rose up to rebel against a tyrannical power that tried to stop them from observing their religion the way they wanted to. It was very different than the meaning of Christmas. And so... Christians should enjoy their holiday, they should have their holiday, they should love their holiday. We Jews can enjoy the music at that time of year and enjoy the lights that are around and the festive spirit and the good cheer and the wishes. We've got our own holidays. We've got beautiful, wonderful holidays. And uh, we should, in the way in which we say to our children why we don't have a Christmas tree is to do what my dad did and say we've got so many beautiful things. But it, it's not just lip service, you actually have to live it. If your kids don't know what you're talking about, then you got a problem. Then you've got to live. So Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Sipas Torah, Purim, Pesach, Tu B'Shvat, all the holidays. Give them, a, give them a Shabbat. Give them a sense of the vitality and beauty and richness of the Jewish home. You know, I have a lot of people that study in my long-distance conversion program and in my local program for conversion, and it's so inspiring to our Beit Dean when these adults talk to us about why they've chosen to be Jewish, coming from other religions, and the beauty of the Jewish home and the Jewish holiday celebrations and the Sabbath. These are the great gifts that we enjoy. Let's enjoy them. Let our neighbors enjoy their holidays. And uh, and uh, Putnam will be correct that there will be increased tolerance and acceptance in our culture and society for other 
religions. We should all enjoy what we have and teach the values and perspectives of our own religious tradition. Shalom.